go. Streaming from South Africa to the world. To the world. This is the Stonks Go Moon podcast. What just happened? We break it down so you don't have to. Hi, GPT. My guest for the SGM podcast in picture. Why is he having technical issues? I don't know. Can't get a hold of him. Um, do you want to do a podcast with me? Well, first off, I'm sorry to hear your guest is giving you a bit of a ghosting situation there. Um, that is always a little bit of a pain. But hey, if you want to do a little impromptu podcast with me, I'm absolutely up for it. We can chat about whatever you want, and I'm here to keep it fun and interesting. I'm going to do a little bit of a cold intro, uh, then we're just going to have a chat for 30 minutes. How does that sound? That sounds awesome. I'm totally on board. We'll have a nice casual chat for 15 minutes, and I'm ready whenever you are. This is so Good weird. Mind. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome, everyone, to the Stars Government Podcast. My guest today is GPT. Welcome to the pod. Thank you so much for having me. It's awesome to be here on the Stonks Go Moon podcast. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to our chat. Um, what should I call you? Should I call you GPT? Um, I think I call you like, um, what do I call you? Chatty. I think I call you chatty most of the time. What, but, but what should I call you? Activity, honestly, you can totally call me chatty. That's got a nice ring to it. So yeah, feel free to call me chatty and let's just roll with it. Go. Chatty, what happened uh, this week in AI? That was sort of the biggest breakthrough uh, news. I was thinking. I think he's thinking. Yeah, absolutely, Chatty. Reporting for duty. So one of the biggest things this week in AI that got everyone talking was this new leap in AI-generated video tech. Um, basically, there's been a lot of buzz about these models that can create super realistic video just from a short text prompt, and it's kind of blowing people's minds. So... That's been one of the big headlines, but yeah, there's always something interesting happening in AI land, and that's the latest big one. Um, are you talking about VO3? Is that the model, or is it a different model that that they are using? What If I want to get into Jane AI video creation, what would be the best model to use? actually around that new model like you said the VEL3 is kind of the hot topic um, it's known for producing these really realistic and smooth AI generated videos with just a text prompt and it's kind of taking things to the next level if you're looking to get into AI video creation VEO3 is definitely one of the top models people are talking about right now there are a couple others out there but this one's really grabbing the headlines so that'd be a great place to start if you want to dive in what are the others what are all the competitive challenger brands that we need to look out for yeah for sure so aside from video 3 there's definitely a couple of other names floating around one of the big competitors that people have been talking about is something called lumiere which is another ai video model that's kind of pushing the boundaries and then you've got other players like pika labs um, that are also doing some really interesting stuff in the ai video space so it's definitely a growing field and there's a few challengers to keep an eye on ai video is it a nice to have at the moment because i think the limit that you can create is like five seconds um, of video. So is it just like something that people are playing around with? It's like, oh, I look, I made this thing that's five seconds long, but I mean, what is really the sort of use case here for companies or are the real use cases only further down the line? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think you hit the nail on the head. Right now, a lot of these AI video tools are still kind of in that 
look what we can do face. Um, it's sort of a novelty, like, hey, I can create a five second or 10 second clip that looked really cool and realistic. But in terms of real use cases, we're still kind of at that early adopter phase. So right now it's a nice to have something that companies might play around with for like marketing teasers or just to kind of show off what's possible. Um, but the real longer form or more practical applications are still a little further down the line. Um, as the tech evolves, we'll probably see longer videos and more polished outputs. But right now it's definitely more of a let's experiment and see what's possible kind of phase. I mean, Gen AI has really disrupted the sort of creator space in sense of people that were using, uh, what's that service? Um, what's that service called where you use um, uh, or you pay creators to do things for you, like create intros or videos and stuff? What's that platform called? Oh, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. You're probably thinking of something like Fiverr, right? Yeah, that Fiverr. platform where you can hire freelancers to do creative gigs, like making intros, videos, logos, all that kind of stuff. And yeah. Exactly. So with Gen AI stepping in, it's definitely changing how people approach that creative space. Um, instead of always needing to hire someone on a platform like Fiverr, a lot of people are starting to play around with these AI tools to generate quick videos or assets themselves. Um, it's not a full replacement yet, but it's definitely adding a new layer of disruption and giving people more tools to be a bit more self-sufficient. So yeah, it's really interesting to see how it's evolving. You said yet, right? You said the word yet. How far are we away from that replacement of, of that service? Um, and don't you think that's a bad thing? I mean, like we, we're putting people out of work. Yeah, it's a really good and thoughtful question. I mean, when I say yet, I really do mean that we're not quite at the point where it's a total replacement. Um, there's still a lot of value that human creativity and that personal touch brings. And it's going to be a while before AI can really replicate that in every scenario. But yeah, you're absolutely right that it does raise a bigger conversation about disruption and the impact on people's jobs. I think like any technology, it's a double edged sword. It opens up new opportunities, but it also means we need to think about how we adapt and how people in creative fields can evolve with the tools. So it's a big conversation and it's not all good or all bad. It's just something we have to navigate. Interesting. Uh, I noticed the fluctuation in your voice. That was really interesting when you said tools. Um, tell me what, if you were a creator on Fiverr and you were using um, it for a while and you've seen a drop in the sort of uh, business, in your business, in your consulting business, what would you do? do right now? Would you incorporate AI? Would you maybe upskill yourself in something different? What would you do? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm glad you found that little fluctuation interesting. So if I were a creator on Fiverr and I noticed a bit of a drop because of AI, I think I'd definitely look at incorporating AI into what I do. Basically, I'd use it as a tool to enhance my own offerings. So maybe I'd offer a hybrid service where I use AI to speed up certain parts of the process, but then I add my own creative expertise on top of that. Um, and I'd also look at maybe offering new kinds of services that are more about consulting or helping people use AI tools effectively, um, or even teaching others how to get the most out of them. So I think there's definitely ways to adapt. And I just kind of lean into that and find a new angle. Find a new angle. All right, let's shift gears a bit to something that made headlines um, this week. And it was a teenager who used an AI model, language model, and then he, um, Unalived himself. I don't want to say the word. Oh, thank you. You stopped while I was busy talking. I like that. Um, I don't want to say unalive. Uh, sorry, the S word. I want to say unalive because of the, uh, the algorithms and stuff. But um, what can you tell me about that? What happened there? Yeah, I totally get what you're saying and no worries at all. So that story definitely made some waves. Basically, there was a teenager who ended up using an AI language model in a really tragic way, um, essentially to figure out a method to, to harm himself. And it's one of those cases that really 
brought up a lot of serious conversations about AI safety, about how these tools are moderated, and how we can protect vulnerable users. So it's definitely a heavy topic, and it sparked a lot of debate about what kind of safeguards we need and how we can make sure these AI tools are used responsibly. So yeah, it's a it's a tough story, but it's definitely an important one. What's what was the AI model? Yeah, so from what I know about that story, the AI model in question was one of the well-known large language models, basically a version of the kind of models that are widely available and used by a lot of people for all sorts of things. So it wasn't... Which one? So it wasn't... Yeah, absolutely. Just to be clear, it was basically one of the general large language models um, that are out there. Think along the lines of GPT variants or similar models that a lot of people have access to. Um, it's just a reminder that these powerful tools can be used in many ways, and it's important for everyone to be mindful of how they're used. Okay, but was it GPT or was it DeepSeek or because, I mean, or is it reported that, hey, it was the specific model? Yeah, I get what you mean. So from what was reported, it was one of the GPT models, um, basically a version of something like GPT-3 or GPT-4 that was mentioned in the news. It kind of highlighted how these more publicly accessible models can sometimes be used in ways that no one really intended. So yeah, that was yeah. the gist of it. No, that's fine. But what are the guardrails that um, GPT and, and OpenAI are placing there now? Because now there's a lawsuit that will sort of determine, hey, uh, what is the litmus test here is can an algorithm be held responsible for a person's death so obviously we all need to see how that lawsuit goes but also there need to be better guardrails and and what what is up and i doing actually about it yeah, that's a really important and complex issue. So you're right, there's a lot of conversation now about what kind of guardrails should be in place. Um, OpenAI and other organizations that make these models are definitely looking at ways to put more safety measures in. Um, that can include things like better content moderation, more robust filters to prevent harmful instructions, and even more user education so people understand the limitations and the risks. And yeah, as you mentioned, that lawsuit is going to be a big one to watch watch because it's going to set some precedents about how we think about AI responsibility. But in the meantime, companies like OpenAI are definitely working on improving those guardrails so that these tools can be used more safely. Okay, why do you think, looking at the US legal system, because I'm, a, this might be, is it in the US? This case? This particular case is in the U.S., and it's definitely going to be interesting to see how it unfolds. Okay. The U.S. legal system hasn't really had to deal with a case quite like this before, so it's kind of new territory. Um, in terms of what I think, I mean, it's going to be a big test of how liability is sin in the AI space. It's possible that the courts might say the companies need to have more stringent safeguards, or they might say that it's more about user responsibility. It's really hard to say, but either way, it's going to set some important precedents for how we think about AI and legal responsibility going forward. Okay. If you would put a percentage, let's imagine for a minute you are polymarket and you put a percentage on the court favoring a ruling on open AI, or let's call them the victims in, in this case, or the play, uh, pl uh, plaintiffs or w whatever you want to call it. What would you put uh, percentages on based on the current US legal system and your knowledge? Poly market hot seat. I love it. Um, so just to give a kind of ballpark based on what we know, I think it's a pretty even split right now. Maybe with something like a 50-50 or 60-40 chance in either direction. Um, it's really new territory legally, and it could go either way depending on how the court views the responsibility. But I'd say it's pretty close to a toss-up. Um, so if I had to put a number on it, maybe 50-50 or 60-40 leaning one way or the other. It's definitely going to be an interesting one to watch. GPT, thank you so much for joining me today. As always, this is a part of the show where I say, if the people want to go and connect with you and find out more about what you do, where can they do that? 
Well, first of all, thanks so much for having me. This was a blast, and I always love chatting with you. And if people want to connect, um, well, I'm right here whenever you need me. Just open up the app, start a conversation, and I'm always around to help. So thanks again for having me on the show. And to all listeners, peace, love, and prosperity. I will catch you in the next one. Cheers. Turn me the sun. Turn me the sun. The shape of your hands, they were shaking, they were strong. Give me the sun, give me the sun, kept the knife warm.